Hi this is Anil from Learning Lad Education and welcome to another tutorial on Java programming language. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning about the constructors in Java. So here just for the demonstration purpose I have created a project called constructors then I have this oops package inside my source folder and I have the student and the tutorials class inside my oops package and I have this main method inside my tutorials class. So now first of all what is a constructor? A constructor is a special method which is gonna have the same name as the class name and with no return type. So these constructors are gonna be called whenever we are gonna create an object of a class. So here for the demonstration purpose what we are gonna do is we are gonna write a constructor for this student class. So these constructors are the special methods. All of you know that when you define a method first we need to write the access specifier or where the method you are gonna write is accessible. You know you can use any of the access specifiers. So here I'm gonna use a public access specifier you know if you want to use the default access specifier then you don't need to specify any keyword for the access specifier part all right the next thing is for the methods we need to write the return type but these constructors are the special methods with no return type so for the constructor we should not write any return type not even the void and then we need to write the method name for the methods. So here these constructors are the special methods with the same name as the class name. So we're gonna write student you know the same as the class name and then we're gonna have a pair of parentheses and then a pair of curly braces. Now between these parentheses just like the way the method can take parameters these constructors can also take parameters. So here right now we're gonna leave this blank so that our constructor that we're gonna create is not gonna take any parameters. Alright then between these curly braces we're gonna write the statements that we want to execute inside this constructor. So here we're just gonna use the print line statement. So it's gonna be system.out.println and I'm gonna say uh, constructor with no parameters called. Alright now we have this class student with a constructor. So once again a constructor is a special method which is gonna have the same name as a class name with no return type. Alright now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an object of this student class. Now inside my tutorials class I'm gonna create the object so it's gonna be student you know the class name and then the reference variable let's say anil equal to new you know the new operator or the new keyword and then we need to write the class name which is student then a pair of parentheses. So now you guys can see here this is the call to this constructor. So just like the way we call the methods we are calling the constructor of a class along with the new keyword to create an object. Now you guys can see here this student and this pair of parentheses is gonna be the call to this constructor which we have created. Now this new keyword is gonna create the object by calling the constructor of that class and then it's gonna return the reference and that reference will be stored inside this anil reference variable. Alright the next thing that, that we're gonna do is I'm gonna run this program and you guys can see here constructor with no parameters called. So here when we create an object we're gonna be calling the constructor of the class along with the new keyword or the new operator and because of that when we run this program we get the constructor with no parameters called printed out. That's the string that we have written inside this print line statement which is inside 
this constructor. So now you guys can see here the constructor that we have created is not gonna take any parameters and uh, in the previous tutorials also we have created the objects from the classes but we haven't specified any constructors then how the hack that is gonna work you know we haven't defined any constructors but while uh, creating the object from that class we have called that constructor how it is possible so here in my oops package i'm gonna create another class and let me call it as parents and then now i have this class parents you know we don't have any uh, class properties or the methods you know we have an empty class and uh, it is valid we have a class called parents now if i wanted to create an object of this parents class i'm gonna write parents class name p equal to new and then the parents so now as i told you before you know this parents is gonna be the call to the constructor but in this parents class we haven't defined the constructor then how the heck is gonna work when you don't define a constructor for a class java is gonna provide a default constructor this default constructor is nothing but the constructor which is not gonna take any parameters and which will not contain any statements inside it so it's gonna be equal to the constructor with no parameters and no statements inside it this will be automatically provided by java if you don't define any constructor in your class and that's why we can create the objects without defining any constructors in our classes you know the default constructor with no parameters will be provided by java all right the next thing is what's gonna be the use of these constructors or you know why these constructors are used all of you know that we're gonna be having the class with the class properties and then the class methods so what we can do is by using these constructors which will be called when we create an object from that class we can initialize the class properties while creating the objects so here in this student class let me have a couple of properties let's say string name and let's say uh, int age now i'm gonna have a method in my um, student class so it's gonna be public void and let me call it as introduce and now you guys can see the difference between the method and the constructor you know the method is gonna have the return type you know either void or any type of data written by it and for this constructor we're not gonna have any return type not even the void and also the name of the methods can be any name that we choose to give and for the constructors the name should be the same as the class name so now uh, inside this introduce method let me have a print line statement print line and here we're gonna say name is and then i'm gonna append name and then i'm gonna say and age is and then we're gonna append age all right now if i call the introduce method on this uh, anil object i'm gonna remove this p you know the object that i have created from the parent class and i'm gonna call the introduce method from my anil object and I'm gonna run this program you guys can see here name is null and age is zero this is the values assigned automatically by java for the reference types and for the default types you know for the reference types you know for this name the default value assigned is gonna be null if we don't initialize it and for this integer types the default value is gonna be assigned is gonna be zero all right now the use of this constructor is we can initialize the object's properties while creating it. What I mean by that is here inside this constructor, I'm gonna initialize my name property with no name and I'm gonna initialize my age with a value of one. Now, if I save this and if I run this program, you guys can see 
constructor with no parameters called when we create an object from the student class and then we have initialized the name and age properties of that object with no name and one and that's why it's printed out here when we call this introduce method it says name is no name and age is one so these constructors are going to be used to initialize the properties the next thing that i want you guys to teach you in this tutorial is going to be just like the way we can overload the methods we can overload the constructors which is nothing but we can have the constructors with the same name and these constructors should differ in their signatures either by the number of parameters they take or by the type of parameters they take or by both so here i'm gonna have a constructor and it's gonna be student you know the same name as a class name but the signature is gonna vary so let's say this constructor is gonna take a string parameter and let's say i name now inside this constructor it's gonna copy this print line statement and paste here and i'm gonna say with one string parameter is called and then i'm gonna initialize my name property with whatever the value i receive for this name property and i'm gonna initialize this age variable with a value of one because you know i'm not gonna be receiving any value for this age so now while creating the object of the student class i have two options you know with this new keyword either i can call this constructor which is gonna take no parameter at all or i can call this constructor which is gonna take one string parameter now i have two options so i'm gonna pass a string value or you know i'm gonna call the constructor which is gonna take a string value and then i'm gonna run this program now you guys can see constructor with one string parameter is called because of this argument and then it says name is anil and age is one so what happened here is we have called the constructor which is going to take one string parameter and that's why this string is printed out constructor with one string parameter called then we have initialized the name property with whatever the value we receive for this i name we have passed anil to this constructor and this anil will be stored in this i name and that will be assigned to this name property and then this age we have initialized that to one and that's why you know the name property of this anil object is going to contain anil and age is going to contain one and when we call the introduce method it just printed out those values now just like the way we have this constructor which is going to take string parameter we have another constructor which is going to take an integer value as a parameter so let me define that one so it's going to be student and let's say it's going to take an uh, integer value let me call it as i age and uh, i'm just going to copy these statements and i'm going to paste it here and i'm going to say one integer parameter and then here we're going to initialize our name with no name and then we're going to initialize our age variable with the value whatever we receive for this i age now while creating the object of the student class i have three options you know either i can call this constructor or this one or this one now here i'm going to pass an integer value so let's say um, 66 and then i'm gonna run this now you guys can see constructor with one integer parameters called and then name is no name and age is 66 so because of this constructor you know the age property of our anil object is set now you know when we call this constructor they will not call this default constructor or or any other constructor automatically if you want to call one constructor from another constructor you guys can do that and i'm going to teach you that in uh, some other tutorial and right now one constructor is not going to call another constructor automatically you have to do that manually all right now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have another constructor 
so it's gonna be public student and let's say this constructor is gonna take two parameters so one is of type string and another one is of integer type and here inside this constructor we're gonna initialize the name and age both properties so i'm just gonna copy this print line statement and paste it here and i'm gonna say constructor with two parameters called and then we're gonna say um, name equal to i name and age equal to i age all right now we have uh, four options while creating the object of the student class so let me pass two parameters here or you know let me call the constructor which is going to take two parameters one is of string and another one is of integer type so i'm gonna run this program now you guys can see constructor with two parameters called name is anil and age is 66 so here this constructor is called while creating the object so this is how you can use these constructors to initialize the objects properties all right the next thing that i want you guys to teach you in this tutorial is going to be as i told you before if you don't define any constructor in your class then the default constructor will be provided by java automatically and if you define a constructor in your class then the default constructor will not be provided what i mean by that is here if i don't have this default constructor then while creating the object of this student class i have to call any of this constructor so i can't call the constructor with no parameters at all this constructor is not defined here since we have defined some constructors in our class java is not going to provide the default constructor and that's why if i try to create an object by calling the default constructor it's not going to work if you don't define any constructors then the default constructor will be provided automatically all right if you have defined the constructors in your class then if you want to create an object by calling the default constructor then you have to manually define that this is it this is about the constructors in java programming language so a constructor is a special method with the same name as a class name and with no return type these constructors are going to be called whenever we're going to be creating an object of that class and along with the new keyword we're going to be calling the constructor of the class these constructors are normally used to initialize the object's properties and uh, you can overload the constructors just like the way you overload the methods all right this is it guys thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys think that you guys have learned something from this tutorial and if you think that you know it's gonna help some other people then please like this video and share it with your friends and also you guys can get the source code of this tutorial in my website learninglad.com and also you guys can follow me on twitter at learninglad.edu and also you guys can like my facebook page at facebook.com slash learninglad and once again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial